Hello, and welcome back to another one of Crow's Greenfoot Lessons. Um, this is going to be part four of our maze. We're going to complete our maze. Um, and so what we need to do to complete the maze is we're going to create a different enemy. So first, we're going to create an enemy that uh, can bounce uh, off the walls and go back and forth. And so... Um, Let's see, we could make another spider or we could do a snake. So we'll do a snake. Uh, anime 2, um, probably not the proper way to, to name um, specifying which enemy bounces off the wall and which enemy appears might be better. Can you call 4, um, please? But My at least it tells you what that it's a different enemy than the first enemy. So, um, what we can do here is place these enemies. Uh, at different spots that you can that they can really go they're gonna be traveling up and down so put them at different spots where they can have a long path up and down wherever that will be on your maze um, so I'm gonna go ahead and save the world here having them placed there and hopefully there's not an error it looks like there is ah so since I call it enemy 2 there's a problem so it's trying to make just the first enemy two, and um, there's already an enemy two, and that that I've named, and that is in my enemy code up here. So you need to renumber this so that it's something brand new, so it does it, so it knows to grab this enemy two, not a different enemy two. So there's another reason why you don't choose enemies in that fashion. Okay. Um. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our snakes move up and down. And they're, when they hit a wall, they're going to bounce back up and move the opposite speed. So we need to go into enemy and first have the move around code. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the act method because I'll forget it otherwise. I'm going to create public void move around and notice how many times have I created that move around code. Okay, I've ha I have that in my other code. I could either copy and paste that in. Um, and if everyone's moving the same way, that would be an easier way to do it. But not everyone's moving the same way in this. So um, actually having different ones is, is fine. Or you can create a super class like we did with the walls. But but so right just like the wall class uh, this is a super class you could create a move around and it would inherit but then they would all move the same way in our game they're not gonna all move the same way um, we're gonna have our move around be uh, set lo location get x comma get why? Because we do not want to rotate them at all, so we're just going to have to slide them, relocate them um, up going down. So now they all travel down. The issue is that they won't bounce back up. What we want is for them to bounce back up. Um, hopefully this doesn't cause another problem. Excellent. Okay. Oh, I got two of them now. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so sometimes you must manually um four seventeen fifty one for enemy twenty two. Sometimes you need to man manually set them in um, huh. 
Okay. Oh, here is the they reset the location of those guys. We don't want that. Okay. So now we go into our enemy two, and we want them to bounce back and forth. So we need to create a variable that will be their speed. So we're going to do int speed equals two. Then we can replace this with speed. And then, for the sake of time, we can just say if is touching wall.class. And that will make it so all of the walls, any of the walls. And is mine wall? Yes, singular wall.class. Open, close, parentheses, curly bracket. Um, we are going to say speed equals negative speed. Now the great thing about this is it doesn't only change speed to negative two when it hits a wall, but then when it goes back and hits another wall, it'll be positive speed, negative speed, positive speed, negative speed. Okay, my issue here is that I think this guy's gonna hit a wall right away. So yeah, he gets stuck, but these guys are working great. So I'm having some issues I try to save the world so I'm just gonna go in and, and inspect enemy 2 is at 4252 that's where I want him so enemy 2 but what was his number not enemy 2 enemy 22 okay 42 let's change this to 42 and then hopefully all right, that seems to fix it. Okay. Okay, so um, now we're going to um, throw in our you win screen, and we're going to make it so that you have to collect a certain num number of pizzas in order to win the game. And ooh. Okay, so it is possible. Okay, all right. So um, we're going to say you need to collect four pizzas uh, to win the game. Um, and so we're going to need to create a. We're going to go ahead and create a you win uh, building. So if you hit the castle, winning platform. Okay, so you need to hit the castle. Um, go ahead and save the world here. And if that he public void you win. Okay, so if is touching. Platform.class, but we don't want it just to happen when he's touching the winning platform. He needs to actually have collected enough pizza. So how do we hit food? Okay, so speed goes up if we hit food. Um, let's create another variable and collect equals zero. And then every time he hits food, collect plus plus. Okay, that way collect will go up. And so if he grabs, if he hits the winning platform, and these are ampersands, uh, the and symbol, so shift seven on those keyboards, uh, and collect equals four equals equals four because we're asking if it's equal to four so there would be two equal signs um get world dot add objects uh new you win we need to create a you win um and the size of our world is 
375 comma 275 semicolon and then greenfoot dot stop okay let's create what is the issue really brackets okay so when I say see reached end wall parsing I don't see the green coming down I know that I need to create another curly bracket. I have not set my curly brackets up right. Cannot find class you win because we haven't created it. New subclass, you win. This will work. Whatever this says works for me. Um, and that we also have the greenfoot.stop. So collect one, collect two, collect three. Three, flag four. I'll do the rest of the work. Ah, I didn't call it in the act method. Always, always, always call it in the act method. Always, always, always test your code before you create the game. So before you lose, you want to make sure you put this you win before you lose because otherwise an error will pop up when you lose because it'll be trying to read the code, um, the uh, you win code after you already have been removed from the world. So collect went up one, so that's good. So that means it'll probably work. Okay, collect went up to two. Oh, I got hit. I got to restart. Okay, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's, ah, uh, delete it. There's four, and there's you win. Okay, the last thing you're gonna need to do is make this snake actually able to kill you. So if you are touching the snake, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do the or operator. So if you hit enemy, so all you have to do is instead of the and, down here we're going to do the or operator so if you hit enemy one or enemy two if is touching enemy and then there's a if you hold shift and go right above enter the thing that look like long colons can be called used as pipes is what they're called um is touching enemy two dot class And that we can test to see if that works on the snakes. Okay, so now we have a fully functional game. Uh, you have a you win, you lose screens, enemies doing a bunch of different stuff, collectible items, increasing your speed if you have a certain amount. And if you don't have that amount, you don't win when you hit the castle right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed making this maze game. Uh, join me next time. Uh, thanks. See ya.